the Department of Environment Conservation Series. I'm Patrice Martin. We are at the Wallings Nature Reserve, so the tweets that you are hearing, they're from the birds. We're on their turf now. Now the term data management, it may not be new to us because we all have to manage our data one way or another, even if that's just the use of our smartphones. But let's consider how it would and could be applied to the environment and why managing environmental data would be important. That is going to be our focus on today's show. I have learned so much. I even learned how to fly a drone. But you have to stay tuned for that. So this button does what again? So this button is focuses the camera. Okay. Fearing the destruction from the next storm or hurricane, we abandon our home and businesses because they are in low-lying areas. Our fishermen's nets and pots go empty for days and weeks. The fish we need to feed ourselves are dying or left due to loss of habitat. Constant droughts have left our ponds and reservoirs dry, leading to water shortages threatening our health and our food supply. We've already begun to take steps so together we can make a difference and create a sustainable nation for future generations. Planting a tree, reducing your driving by using public transportation, carpooling or switching to an electric car, using energy efficient bulbs and appliances are all things you could do to make a difference in limiting climate change. Remember, there's no planet B. Now in the Department of Environment, data management is the way that they collect, store, validate, protect and analyze data. It ensures timeliness, reliability and accuracy. This means the data management unit in the Department of Environment has a very big job and some cool gear to help them get the job done. We have three different parts. How does this all work? Uh, so you have the drone, the remote, and the tablet that plugs into the remote and makes the remote speak to the drone. Now this is a drone, not just any drone. This is the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. Now it can capture still images and video and map out an entire area to capture multiple images all at once. So these are actually very intelligent and they have obstacle sensors. You can see them on every side and on the bottom. So when they are flying and they get too close to birds, buildings, anything like that, it will sort of bounce back. Like it tells itself to move. To move. Yeah. Oh, okay. In our line of work, we deal with environmental data. So this includes data on the environment um, to include air, soil, water, earth, um, species and their habitats. It also involves factors that affect the environment, such as the noise, waste, emissions. And when we speak about environmental information, we also include the policies, the laws, the plans on the environment. So data provides us with a picture of what is happening with the resource. Without this data, we have no idea of what's really happening with the resource. Now from there, you can see further down into St. John. You can. The name of the unit is Monitoring, Evaluation and Data Management. We deal with monitoring and evaluation of our projects and our programs. We also deal with field data collection 
and we also deal with the data management of the databases, right? So as it relates to the monitoring and evaluation, we develop an m and &E framework whereby we, it's essentially an m and &E plan. So what it does, it looks at the deliverables for these projects and it then identifies some indicators to track the progress of these deliverables. So these indicators are smart, so they're specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time bound. And uh, based on how we track this, this, these indicators, it gives us a picture of what we're doing with the projects. Uh, as it relates to field data collection, we do traditional mapping techniques. So we do environmental monitoring, whereby we go out and we collect data on water quality, for example. We have this ongoing water quality program, whereby we go to several beaches around the island and also to several waterways and we collect samples and we test them and this gives us a picture of what the quality of the water is there. We also have a biodiversity baseline data collection program whereby we focus on the marine and the terrestrial aspects. So up to recently we had this ongoing marine program whereby we did assessments in different areas around Antigua. This one would direct the angles of the camera. So whatever angle the camera is, that's the direction that you can see. And this device right here, this will tell you how to position the camera up or down. Okay. Yeah. So if I go this way. Right, it's oh, down, see? okay. Right. Got you. So if you want to lower the drone, yeah. you can just come down like this. Yeah. I do you keep the eye on the drone and the drone and Okay, still. so you could look at the tablet to see that, okay, whatever data you're trying to capture mm -hmm. that you're seeing it on here. Okay. As well as to make sure that is fine. Yeah, it's okay. fine in the sky. So this button does what again? So this bu button is focuses the camera. Okay. So if you want to turn the camera more to the left or more to the right, okay. and then this one right here, uh -huh. focuses yeah. the camera either up or down. We also manage several databases at the Department of Environment. We have an environment statistics database where we identify thematic areas and within these areas we have indicators as well so for example water water resources is a is a sector a typical indicator in this area would be the quantity of water that is produced within a, a time period for a year a year for example we also have our knowledge information management system whereby essentially it's the it's a database where we house all the information data that is generated by the department of, Envi of environment we recently hired a uh, knowledge information management system specialist and this person will now come in and then restructure this this database and lastly we have our our environmental GIS database so GIS is geographic information systems it gives us an idea of it's, it's a spatial database essentially it has two components so it has the spatial component whereby it has the geographic coordinates of whatever feature we're mapping for example the tree if we want to map this tree we go with our device or GPS. We stand next to the tree and then we take the geographic coordinates of that tree. Then in addition to that, we, we also add in information such as the characteristics of the tree. If we know the age of the tree, we, in, we input the, in, the age of the tree, the name of the tree, the height and any other characteristics that we want. Once we've downloaded that data from the GPS, we put it on the system and then we can then see a point whereby it gives us the exact geographic coordinates of this tree as well as any attribute data that we've, we've done. I have to refer back to our act, the Environmental Protection and Management Act of 2019. So part 10 of this act speaks about the environmental information and it clearly articulates the different types of databases that is uh, managed by the Department of Environment. So we have our environmental information management and advisory system. This is our GIS database. Right? We also have our natural resource inventory. It's a subset of the GIS database, but this, this database will be housed on an online platform. So persons, the public, will be able to access these environmental data sets. We also have our environment registry. 
this database speaks specifically about the reporting and monitoring and compliance to multilateral environmental agreements. We have drones, right, so the unmanned aircraft systems, and from time to time we would get complaints at the Department of Environment. I, I could recall one time we got a complaint that some developer was backfilling a pond. So we, what we did was we went out and we did a site inspection. We took our drones and we were able to fly the area and capture the imagery of the area that was backfilled. Now, due to technology, Google Earth has this feature whereby you can go back in time and see an exact spot and you can see what it looked like some years before. So what we did was we could do a comparison between the present situation and what existed before. And we were able to quantify the amount of area that the pond was backfilled, communicate this to the developer and have the developer then remove that material and then restore the pond to its, to its um, previous state. We have an ongoing water quality monitoring program. We are doing what is called as baseline data collection, whereby we go out for a period of time and we do, we do the sampling of these, of these areas, the, the beaches and the inland waterways, and we get the data. So the period for this baseline data collection is generally two years, whereby we go out monthly during that two year period and capture the data. We'll capture this, take up the samples and then analyze the samples and then get the data. So we can tell you exactly what the salinity is, what the pH is, what the nutrient concentrations are. And we do an average over that time and we get an idea of what the, the baseline water quality for this area. And so, say for example, a year from now, two years from now, an incident happens in these areas and uh, the water quality changes, we can then go out and sample and then with those results compare it to the, to, the, to, to the data that's within our database. So we have two ongoing projects. Both of them are funded by the Global Environment Facility and uh, one of them is under the cross-cutting capacity development focal area of this Global Environment Facility and this this project is aiming to create a national environmental information system. I spoke about the natural resource inventory earlier, whereby this is the subset of the environmental information management and advisory system, and this, this is housed on an online platform. So this project will create this online platform, right, and will allow access to the public on, these, on the data from these environmental resources. We also have another project, again funded by the Global Environment Facility, but under the Capacity Building Initiative for Transparency Focal Point. This project essentially will be creating the Environment Registry, a database that I spoke about earlier as well. So this database will be focused on the monitoring and reporting and compliance of, to multilateral environmental agreements. Right? So these two projects are helping us to operationalize our Environmental Protection and Management Act and create these databases. Fly a drone. <laughs>Environment is proud to announce that it has successfully presented Antigua and Barbuda's sixth national report to the Secretariat for the Convention on Biological Diversity. As a signatory to the Convention on Biological Diversity, Antigua and Barbuda is required to submit national reports on our progress in the implementation of the objectives within the Convention. The most recent report outlines our progress in meeting the set national biodiversity targets which are based on the Global Aichi target. These are a set of 20 global targets under the Strategic Plan for Biodiversity 2011 to 2020. The sixth national report shows that we are making excellent headway in achieving these targets with 19 of 20 targets on track to be achieved 
by our set deadline. While we are pleased to have made great headway as detailed in the sixth national report, we will continue to improve our approach to biodiversity and commit to working with our stakeholders and the public to sustainably manage our biodiversity resources. The Department of Environment wishes to thank you for taking an interest in Antigua and Barbuda's progress and will continue to keep you informed. Remember, it is our responsibility to preserve our island's biodiversity today for the generations of tomorrow. Data is a valuable resource, especially for the Department of Environment. With me is a data management team to discuss projects, geographic information, drones, and environmental monitoring. Let's welcome Jason Williams, the data manager in the Department of Environment. <laughs> Janelle Johnson, geographic information systems consultant. And Orain Nurse, a technical consultant within the Department of Environment. Can you each tell us about the day-to-day -day role that each of you perform? Our unit is the Monitoring, Evaluation and Data Management Unit. We, on a daily basis, I coordinate the programs and the projects of the, of the unit. So we, do, we have an M&E framework whereby we assess the performance of projects. We also have a environmental programs, for example, our environmental monitoring systems. We also do um, database management and, and we also coordinate data management projects. So we have projects whereby we're aiming to create environmental information systems. Okay. And Janelle? Yeah, so day to day I contribute to the IMAS, which is one of the geographic information systems databases that Jason would have mentioned. Um, I create data layers, I update ones that we have, and I identify gaps where we might need to create other data layers in the future. Um, additionally, I contribute to the environmental monitoring programs that Jason also mentioned, uh, mostly with the drones and the mangrove monitoring. So we go out, we fly, we map the mangroves, and we assess their health and see if there are any interventions that we can take. Pretty fun and pretty cool information. Yeah, enjoy it. All right. And Orain, what about you? My main duties involve water quality management. Um, so that would involve using water quality samples every month, and then we we'll compile the data and then generate a report. Also, I would do environmental monitoring, which would involve the drones, as well as using the Junos, which is a GPS device. Now, I notice we have a question from the audience. How do you use data to protect the environment? So with the environment, there are sort of indicators that you can use that indicate uh, environmental health. And these can be things like biodiversity extent in a certain area, um, health of mangroves or a certain kind of population. So at the Department of Environment, we collect data on all of these indicators, and then we can look at them over a time period and see how things are changing and if they're improving or if they're getting worse and use that to make our decision. Jason, can you explain to us what the Rio Convention is really all about? Okay, so the Rio Conventions, they are international environmental agreements. So there's three of them. There's one that deals with climate change. That, that is known as the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. There's one that deals with biological diversity. That's the, that is the Uni United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity. And there's a third that deals with sustainable land management. That's the United Nations Convention to combat desertification. The other episodes in this conservation series will touch on each one of these separately. We have another question. <laughs> so, how does Antigua and Barbuda use data management uh, to fulfill its international obligations under those same real conventions? I can speak first about the Climate Change Convention. So we collect data on emissions. So these are greenhouse gases emissions. So we're speaking about carbon dioxide, methane, these gases that go out into the atmosphere. Antigua and Barbuda, under the Climate Change Convention, has that obligation to report on how much we are emitting into the atmosphere. Right? So there's a process involved in this. It's called a 
greenhouse gas inventory or GHG inventory for short. So the data management unit collects data to then help us report to the Climate Change Convention. Yeah, and we also collect data in partnership with and from other local organizations um, and NGOs. Uh, and we use the data that they're able to provide us to also contribute uh, to this reporting. So that would be things like biological diversity um, and again, environmental health. Right, and we also take data from the land uses in Antigua. So for example, agriculture or forestry or industrial land uses, and we submit those to the UNCCD, which is the United Nations Convention on Combating Desertification. Jason, can you elaborate on the monitoring and evaluation framework? The Department of Environment implements um, a series of environmental projects, right? So these are donor-funded projects. So what we do is we need to track the progress of these projects. We want to ensure that they're, ac they're accomplishing their outputs and their deliverables. So what we do is we look at the projects, we s divide them into components, and then with each component, we would then select an indicator. Um, Jenny would have spoken about environmental indicators earlier. So the indicator is basically the way how we track the, the, the project and how the project is doing over time. Say, for example, we have a project that is, that is um, aiming to conserve a specific area. So what we want to do is an indicator that we would set would be basically to the, the acreage of forest area that is conserved over a period of time. And what we do is we monitor this over, over a series of time. So we go in on a yearly basis and then we look at the area and to see if the, the efforts that are being implemented, such as reforestation, for example, if this is having an effect in the, on the area. And this is how we quantify the area to ensure that the project is meeting its, its goals. Thank you to the panel and the audience for joining us for another episode of the conservation series presented by the Department of Environment. Until next time, I'm Patrice Martin. <laughs>